Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of Crypto Life. Today I'm going to talk to you about the coin Electronium. Electronium is quite a well known coin on the market because of its two unique features. Firstly, it's a privacy coin as a fork of Monero, and secondly, it's the world's first mobile mining cryptocurrency. However, over the past couple of months, Electronium has been facing a couple of major problems. The first is flooding. So as you can see here, some people with very malicious intent have been doing millions of transactions every hour to try and flood and overload the system. Why they would do that, I have no idea, but someone has definitely been trying to sabotage the project. The second difficulty they are facing is the monopolization or centralizing of their mining. Now, Electronium's mining was designed to be lightweight and to be able to be done on a CPU. They are even boasting of a cell phone app to do mock mining to attract the masses. So easy mining has always been one of the core attractive features of the Electronium project. The company Bitmain has recently designed A6 GPU chips to do super mining. Originally, these chips were designed for Monero and they were starting to monopolize the Monero's mining market and changing it from a decentralized model to a centralized model. Monero didn't like it as a privacy coin, so Monero did a fork to make themselves ASIC resistant and then all the people with ASIC GPU chips thought, what can we do with our expensive chips now? So then they turned their eyes to Electronium, who in technology is very similar to Monero, and they started to mine Electronium. The result is a monopoly of Electronium's mining, and currently, Electronium miners who are using CPU are already experiencing an 80 to 90% reduction in their mining returns. And the problem is only going to get worse because in June, ASICS is going to release a new version of their ASICS GPU chips, which will mine 10 times faster than the current ASICS. So Electronium needs to do something soon. And they have. Electronium has decided to do a fork at block 307,500, which is estimated to happen on the 30th of May. And hopefully the fork will address all the above problems. Now it is important to know guys that when we talk about a fork in blockchain, we don't, it doesn't always mean a second currency. Many times because of examples like Bitcoin Cash or Ethereum Classic, token investors think of a fork as creating a second currency and by holding the first currency, they can get free tokens of the second currency. Now sometimes this is the case, but it's not always the case. A fork is basically in its definition a major upgrade to the systems and sometimes that upgrade is so drastic and disagreed on that the project splits into two different parties who create two different currencies. However, this is not the case with this fork. This fork will purely be a software upgrade and there will be no second Electronium currency. The reason I need to point this out is because there has been another coin that has been launched recently that is trying to take advantage of the word fork in the upcoming upgrade. This project is calling itself Electro Nero. So it's not Electronium because they are not recognized by the Electronium company, but they've intentionally made themselves sound very similar by calling themselves Electro Neo. They've even designed their logo to look like Electronium, except that their lightning is yellow, where Electronium's lightning is blue. They also post all the features of the upcoming upgrade as their positive features to make themselves look as a better project. And they are asking users to send them the private key of their ETN or Electronium token wallet so that they can claim the new ETNX token. And on the website, if you go there, they don't show any of their personal profiles. So Electro Neo smells like a scam to me, guys. I recommend being aware of it and then staying far away from it. What I want to do for the rest of this video is three things. Firstly, I'm going to introduce Electronium and explain their unique features like mobile mining in simple terms for those who are new to this project, as well as I want to explore and explain their original tech like ring signatures in simple terms, and then use that original tech to explain secondly, the upcoming fork or updates in a simple manner. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about how I see Electronium as a project. Electronium has always been somewhat of a controversy with some people loving it and others hating it and the haters are accusing them of not having their own developers because their technology is based off Monero's and not really their own. Our channel as you know guys is very neutral in our reviews. We don't shield or fight any particular project so I'm going to try and give you a neutral perspective on Electronium by the end of this video. To learn all the above and more, keep watching this video.
Electronium is the first cryptocurrency to secure membership with the GSMNA, which is a tech group that consists of nearly 800 operators with more than 300 companies in the mobile ecosystem. This is huge and they are a project that is very closely linked to the mobile industry. Now, the average person on the street doesn't know what cryptocurrency is and can't be bothered to learn a lot about blockchain and crypto stuff. But the average person on the street will be willing to download an app and try it for fun, especially if the app gives them free money or cryptocurrency. The Electronium app has a simple mining feature and the Android mining app was released about two months ago and has already attracted over a hundred thousand mobile miners. So the marketing is working and people are attracted to this app. Besides being an easy to use app, Electronium also wants to be an easy to spend currency because there is no point in getting free currency if you can't spend it. Electronium has already signed agreements to develop payment integration with over 1.2 million agents, dealers and distributors in over nine countries and counting. Sometimes the best projects are not necessarily the most complicated projects, but the simplest projects with the lowest barriers to use. Electronium markets themselves not as a blockchain technology, but as an app that is easy to install, easy to use, and will give you free money. Those who are purists on blockchain technology might be offended with this approach because they feel that it doesn't showcase the greatness of blockchain technology. But I personally think that this is quite a refreshing and clever way to achieve mass adoption. Now let's take a look to see if they actually have a good technology. On their websites, you will find two white papers. The first is an overview white paper. This one is very pretty and explains a lot of basic details like what is a cryptocurrency, etc. If you have been in the crypto scene for more than a few months, you probably won't learn much from it. The second is a technical white paper. It's not very long, only eight pages, but it does explain the technical details in good summary. If you're familiar with Monero's technology, you will find this white paper also very familiar. The underlying technology they use is called Crypto Node Algorithm. It's a technology that's designed for privacy and it's not just unique to Monero. Other privacy coins like Bitcoin also uses it. Uh, there's two main features to the privacy and the first is called untraceability. So normal transactions use an ordinary signature that will tell everyone that you were the one doing the transaction. A ring signature is a collection of multiple signatures from various transactions all hiding inside a pool of thousands of signatures. So if you try to trace a transaction back to the receiver, all you hit is that pool of thousands of transactions, the ring, and you can't tell who sent the transaction. That's called untraceability. The second feature is known as unlinkability. So think of untraceability as privacy that focuses on the receiver end of the transaction, but unlinkability is privacy that focuses on the sender end of the transaction. So if I use ring signatures, no one can trace which transaction, uh, who the sender of the transaction is. But if they know my account, they can obtain information about my account just by looking at my personal transaction history. Unlinkability is the process of preventing anyone from tra tracing your transaction history. To make an account unlinkable, Electronium's crypto node you, creates multiple one-time keys, meaning that every time you send a transaction, you are sending it from a different address. So if I was to trace back to that one address, I will find only one transaction, not all your transaction records. The combination of untraceability and unlinkability together Create what is known as blockchain analysis resistance or blockchain analysis ambiguity because the combination of untraceability and unlinkability basically creates billions of possibilities and makes the system very resistant to anyone who is trying to analyze the system the way they would analyze Bitcoin. Now, as good as the privacy sounds, unfortunately, in the upcoming update, they will be removing ring signatures. The reason they have to remove ring signatures is because of block capacity. To be very efficient at processing microtransactions, which is what Electronium is all about, you need to be able to fit as many transactions into one block as possible. If I was to give you an analogy, imagine that all of us are queuing up to take the train during peak pick our traffic. The more people you can fit on one train or every train, the quicker the traffic will clear and the shorter the waiting time. 
Ring signatures though are chunky and the ring signatures in the Electronium project have no size limit. In fact, the bigger the ring, the more private and secure the transaction is because the bigger the mixture of um, signatures. However, it takes up too much block space. It's like trying to squeeze people with hula hoops onto a train. It severely limits the number of transactions that you can put on the block. So after careful consideration, the team have decided that they will do away with ring signatures. They will still keep the unlinkability, which means the wallets will be private. But if you want true privacy, you'll be better off using Monero. The second update is increasing block size before penalty. What this means is at the moment, miners are create, who are creating blocks above a median size limit will be penalized. So increasing the block size penalty encourages bigger blocks and biggest blocks in this case will mean faster transactions. They will also make their technology anti-async and this is really good news for the CPU miners which is the original intention of Electronium. So it's really good to see that Electronium is remaining true to their ethos and protecting CPU mining. Another update is what is called mempool, increasing the mempool life to 3 days. So in the very odd case where there is high transaction volume, a transaction can remain in the mempool for a certain period of time. At the moment now, that time limit is 24 hours after which it will be sent back. To be sent back meaning it's a failed transaction. So by increasing the mempool life, this reduces the possibility of a return transaction, meaning it reduces the risk of failed transactions. The fifth update is that they will be increasing the transfer fees or the transaction fees by 10 times. Now, while this may sound scary when you first hear of it, it's actually a good thing and I'll explain why. Electronium's current transaction fee is very, very cheap. It's so cheap, it's almost free. It costs 0.01 ETN, which and each ETN is worth 2 cents. So it's basically costing only 0.02 cents for one transaction, which means that you can spam 5,000 transactions for $1. And this is why they're having the problem of flooding because people can afford to just flood the system with transactions and sabotage the system with useless transactions. By increasing the cost of a transaction to 0.1 ETM, which is 10 times, that basically only costs 0.2 of a cent. It costs almost nothing for us who are using um, Electronium for proper transactions. For example, if I'm buying a shirt for $30, having to pay an extra 0.2 cents is nothing. But for someone who is trying to spend thousands if not millions of transactions per second, that 10 times increase in transaction fee is going to hurt them and discourage such activities. In fact, for token holders, being, having a higher transaction fees within reasonable limits is actually good for token price. There will also be a change to two minute blocks and block rewards. Okay. Now, as token holders or miners, you don't have to worry about this one because it doesn't affect mining at all. Basically, what it means is that they are moving two minute blocks to decrease the chance of creating what is called an orphan block or a useless block. And this halves the mining reward. So to compensate for um, moving the blocks to two minute blocks, they are doubling the block rewards. So they are halving on one side and then they are doubling on the other side. But overall, for us, as users either as miners or as token holders um, it won't affect the mining or token price at all the last update they have is called reducing difficulty windows now some people have discovered that by hitting the electronium blockchain with a large surge of rental power the miner can have an advantage over a short period of time so by reducing the difficulty window it means that uh, you don't need a larger power to uh, have more effective mining okay so it discourages or it reduces the benefits of having larger surges of power so basically it encourages fairer mining okay so this is again uh, encouraging fair mining for the majority so all of this is very good updates but and it's a lot of updates which is exactly why they need a process called a fork to do it again on may the 30th again a fork is not minting a new currency it's just a massive upgrade to the existing system electronium is open source which means that people can contribute to the project so if you are a contributing developer do check the github for more updated details now just a little bit more tech before we move on and the last bit of tech to cover is about their consensus algorithm. 
Electronium uses a consensus algorithm that's called egalitarian proof of work. Those of you who have been in the crypto space for one or two years may not be familiar with this al a consensus algorithm. But back in 2014 and 2015, when people were looking on how to improve the current proof of work, rather than coming up with new consensus algorithms like uh, proof of stake, depause, and pause, people were looking still at proof of work and coming up with different improved versions of proof of work. And egalitarian proof of work was one of the more popular solutions then. So the standard proof of work was designed to be decentralized. That means to be used equally by thousands of nodes. However, mining chips were created and they began to monopolize the entire mining industry. So what was meant to be a decentralized process became a centralized process. Now, egalitarian proof of work is a version of proof of work that attempts to restore equal voting rights to all participants in the consensus algorithm. It relies on the random access to slow memory and it emphasizes latency dependent. Okay? Uh, an easy way of looking at it is to think that no matter how big a node you are, you still only get one vote. So it's another aspect of the project that promotes fairness. Otherwise, if you don't have this aspect, then the people, who, the big miners will mine more and then they'll become bigger and then they'll basically be the ones that monopolize the whole process. But in this um, model, no matter how big you are, you are still worth only one vote. Now, I'm going to sidetrack a little bit and you know, just address people who are unhappy with the Electronium project and accuse them of forking for Monero and not having their own technology. When you actually do a review of the Electronium technology, you see that the original choice of picking Monero in the first place or picking um, this consensus algorithm, basically the original technology as well as the updates that they are going to implement at the end of this month are all geared towards creating a fair environment for normal CPU miners to benefit. See, as a company, they have remained true to their ethos and they are doing everything they can to protect their fairness. They could just be lazy and warn people about the incoming GPU miners and kind of almost force the community to buy those GPU miners, but they don't do that. They actually take a very drastic step of creating a fork, okay, to um, become ASIC resistant. And I think that unless you review the tech and see how intentional they are in being fair, you might miss the genuine good intention of the team. I actually really like what they are doing. Okay, This is what decentralization is all about. It's about removing monopoly of profit and distributing it to the masses so that the average person has a chance to gain wealth. So Electronium, in my opinion, is doing way more than some other bigger projects in protecting the decentralization of blockchain. I'm going to talk briefly now about their mobile mining. Now, proof of work uses quite a bit of computational power. We know that. So how can you possibly effectively mine with your mobile phone? The answer is actually you can't. The mobile mining is not real mining. It is only the experience of mining. It doesn't actually use your phone's CPU to solve complicated cryptographic problems, which is what mining is. Rather, it is determining the available CPU power that you have on your phone and then determining the amount of mining that you could have potentially done with that CPU um, power and rewarding you accordingly. That's why it consumes so little bandwidth and battery is not actually doing the mining work. So the mobile mining is basically an advertisement for mining. In fact, you can play a little mining game to increase the number of coins you receive. And the game isn't a pointless game. It's actually a game that is educating people about what mining is and then encouraging people to set up their own proper CPU miners. Now, given that a decentralized project runs on the number of nodes it has, the more nodes it has, the more processing power it has. Um, this is a very smart move by Electronium. The rewards for the mobile mining comes from the leftover of the ICO fundraising, which at the moment is about 2 billion coins. Now, in terms of how much people can mine each day, I might be wrong here, but from asking around, it seems that people are getting about 20 to 30 coins per day. So if you're out there and you're actually using the mobile miner, please let us know in the comment section how much you are averaging a day and uh, what make and model your phone is so that the community can have a rough idea of what to expect. 
only the Android version is out at the moment. The iOS version is not out yet, but the rumors are that it will be released very soon. And apparently the upcoming update will also vastly improve the mobile mining experience because there are still some teething problems with people uh, being locked off unintentionally or inconsistent hash rates, etc. Okay guys, if you hung in there with us up to this point, good job. We are finally done with the tech stuff. Phew. This is the team behind the project, or rather this is part of the team. There's a total of 22 members listed on their websites, including their dog, Ruby. I won't go through all the resumes, of course, but I'll run through a couple. Richard Ellis is their director and founder. He's been in the internet and technology arena for 19 years and has skills as a coder, hacker, developer, designer, and his previous ventures include web design and development. And he's also the current CEO of another project called retotal.com, which is used by Fortune 500 companies and hundreds of thousands of users worldwide. Chris Gorman is their co-director. He has a very successful history in mobile, fintech, technology, and retail. He previously won the Ernst & Young's UK e-business entrepreneur of the year. He also won the Scottish entrepreneur of the year. Young Business Leader of the Year, Glenn Fittich Spirit of Scotland in Business, and the Laudable as Bad Businessman of the Year Award. And back in June 2005, Chris also received an OBE for services to business from the Queen at Buckingham Palace. Wow, <laughs> that's very impressive. So you can go through the rest of their profiles on their website, but the team definitely comes across as a team that knows what they are doing. They also have a couple of advisors who are a director in private businesses and consultant in e-commerce, online gaming, and fintech business. Um, both of these are not names that I recognize, but they have over 20 years of experience, and I'm sure they are significant names in their own fields. The Electronium project also has a few partners, which include Zayas, who is the telecom operating brand of Megasoft, and then they also partnered with B Media and Coin, which you guys will probably know is the crypto exchange launching the cash liquidity project. They also already have a couple of online stores that are accepting uh, ETN as a payment, namely Digit and MegaX Store. So whilst there's still a lot of rooms to grow in terms of partners, um, the fact that they have even one place accepting them as a token payment is quite huge in my opinion because not many cryptocurrencies have that at the moment. Electronium have also patented their payment gateway software about a month ago. Now apparently this is instantaneous payment so it's very good stuff. Please don't ask me how they do it and why I didn't cover their payment software under the tag review because it's patent and they're keeping it secret. But what they did say is that now because they have the patent, they can potentially add Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero and other cryptocurrencies to their wallet and afford instant payment or checkout to any vendors. This technology alone is huge news. More stuff happening with Electronium. So just five days ago, their CEO was part of a BBC documentary called Money, eh, sorry, Magic Money. So, well, you know, that the month of May is looking like it's a very, very busy month for Electronium. All right, coming towards the end, guys. And this is their roadmap. And I must say, this is a sucky roadmap. Now, roadmap will usually give you dates which the team are expected to hit milestones. This roadmap gives you the dates after they hit the milestones, which is basically pointless. They also give you a general list of milestones that they hope to hit in the time frame of second quarter and beyond and beyond so that's not even the time frame it's just between now and forever furthermore the goals that they are listing in their roadmap is extremely vague for example one goal is to continue to grow team and another goal is to develop commercial relationships what do you exactly mean by that what number are you aiming for so there's no numbers no dates nothing so I think it's not very accountable to the investors because if I was an investor, I would have no idea what to look forward to beyond the month of May. The team could be sitting on their bums, not doing any work, and we would have no idea because there is no date and no milestone to check their progress. In this case, they are a very good team, so I'm sure they won't just sit on their bums, but I'm explaining why it's important to have proper milestones and dates on the roadmap to be accountable to the community. Finally, we're going to take a look at pricing and then we'll finish. This is their current price taken from Coin Codex, which is my current favorite website for looking at pricing. I much prefer Coin Codex over Coin Market Cap. And on Coin Codex, they are currently sitting at 2.3 cents. A token is 2.3 cents. 
at their all-time high, they were sitting at 19 cents. So that was very much higher. They are literally sitting only at 15% of their all-time high. And this is crazy currently because the market has picked up and most coins have returned to about a third of their all-time high by now. But for some reason, Electronium has still remained under the radar as the market has beginning to pick up. So with all the recent happenings, okay, I don't think that Electronium will remain under the radar for too much longer. The main thing that really catches my attention is the fact that online shops have begun to start signing up to use Electronium tokens or ETN tokens as payment over the last couple of months. If a token has a use case, a real life use case, in my opinion, they will be successful. It's just a matter of when. And if Electronium ever was to return to their all time high, that's already at 8x growth. And I think that it's very likely they will do that within the next few months. In conclusion, I like the Electronium project, guys. I really think that there's a lot to like in this project. The project is simple to understand with low and almost no barrier for the general public to start using their app. They have partners, they have actual use cases for the currency, and they are still growing the partnership base. The token price currently is so low at 2.3 cents and it seems to be a very attractive entry point. They also have a very good team with successful track records in their careers. And most of all, I personally believe that as a project, they have a very good ethos of keeping the whole project, especially the profits of the project, fair and decentralized for all users. As a believer in blockchain and decentralization, I'm a big fan of that. So that's it guys, those are my thoughts on Electronium. As always, none of this is professional advice, this is all my personal and subjective opinion, so please always do your own research and make your own decisions. Thanks for hanging there with us. If you like this video and found it helpful, do give us that like and subscribe. We also have an Ethereum donation link in the description box below if you would like to support me as a content creator and help me to achieve my dream of doing these videos and reviews full time. And finally, do join our Telegram group. We have an amazing community who are constantly finding new amazing crypto projects um, that they asked me to review. And I have no idea how they find all these great projects, but there's so many of them. And I'm so blessed to be in that group and hear of these coins. I wish that I could introduce all of these coins to you guys, but unfortunately at the moment, I don't have the time to review all of these coins. But definitely do join our Telegram group so that you don't miss out on any of the coins that the guys are recommending and talking about. All right, guys, have a wonderful day wherever you are. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll catch you guys again very soon.